nice stock, in this case, turkey stock. And while you would normally start with a raw ingredient, we have the luxury of working at a place that's able to supply us with turkey carcasses. And we have all the dark meat. Most of the breast meat has been removed for sandwiches. And so we have the legs and the thighs uh, and the body, which will still provide us uh, with a decent amount of gelatin. We let it reduce for several hours. It's going to become nice and concentrated. Uh, we'll skim the fat off after it cools to use for schmaltz uh, rendered chicken fat for cooking other vegetables. I you... always do this with turkey. Like, I don't waste any of the turkey. Yeah, we don't either. <laughs> it's just like... So we've been picking off the white meat to eat and um, putting the dark meat. If you want to take a look over here, we've got two pots with dark meat going to which we'll be adding onion, celery, garlic, bay leaves, peppercorns, salt, um, <clears throat> some other seasonings, uh, as well as some fresh sage that we bought. What's the minimum you cook it for? Like, I like cooking it overnight, but... Well, actually, I'm not going to let it cook overnight, probably, because of the fact that we need to pick the meat off of this okay, yeah. to make for the gumbo. So, if I have enough energy after today's Mardi Gras parade, come home and pick the meat off uh, later after we strain it. Uh, if not, it'll end up getting picked in the morning. Sausage gumbo, and with the sausage, we have some Manda sausage, which is a New Orleans brand that's very, very popular. Just cut, you know, so it doesn't fall apart in the gumbo. Um, but what we want to do is just lay it down so that we get a nice, crispy caramelization. I need to get some more. So you're just like searing one edge. Just, well, sear it, flip it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you're, se you're searing gonna, both edges. I'm flip, going to flip it so we do both sides, but what we want is the brown color, and I think the mistake a lot of people make is they just throw it all into the pot and then start, and it never really browns. And you said you also are trying to render some fat out because it'll be too much. Correct. Like if we were to put this into the gumbo, which is basically a soup, um, raw, we all the fat that's in the sausage would cook into the soup and it would just be too fatty, too gross. You know, so by doing it this way, we're going to get a lot of that excess fat out so that we just have the meat part. We'll add this back it's like basically a garnish near the close to the end. Um, additionally, um, <clears throat> by doing it this way, we can get some fond, some, some flavor start to build up in the pan of the browning, the, the little brown bits that you scrape up into the soup is what builds the flavor. There you go. You know, you never want to get rid of that. Okay, we're going to let that cook a bit. The way I save the sausage fat, um, I don't throw away the fat because I'll use that later in another recipe in another dish to cook some vegetables, something that needs more fat. Never waste anything. Never waste anything. Nice and caramelized. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we want. That's what builds up the flavor. And then later when we're scraping the pot, and we're going to scrape that, you can look in the pot and you can see the caramelization, the brown bit. So it doesn't matter if you like basically have it stick to the pan because that's the, the... That's what you want. Yeah. If you look in, in French cooking, it always tells you to brown the bit and then... When you're making a soup, I use a silicone brush. I never use metal on metal. Um, these are not, the heat is not as high on this burner. Nice and charred. Nice and charred. 
Let me find it. So. All right, so today we're going to make some turkey gumbo. And if you look missed the two hours of chopping. <laughs> and, just like... and if you're wondering what the recipe is, let me just tell you that there are as many recipes for gumbo as there are numbers in the telephone book, if you're old enough to remember those. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the thing about it is that people make it with what they have and in this case we have some turkey that we already uh, had that we have boiled, simmered rather, with a lot of vegetables to make a nice turkey stock and then pick the meat off of that and we have that ready to go. And we did that yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday. Today is Sunday. Well, today is Sunday. And we're prepping this for Mardi Gras on Tuesday. Tuesday, so we have cooked food already ready, so we don't have to cook on that day, um, so that we can just go out to the parades and then come home and eat. Uh, the only thing we'll have to do is cook the rice. Now, the, the thing that surprised me most is how many hours this takes, because it was like three or four hours to make the broth, and then... Well, this is a long simmering recipe, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the olden days, the people lived at a much slower pace, slow food uh, movement. Uh, which is now kind of in trendy, is something that has always been the case for the Creole and Cajun people of Louisiana. You know, usually one partner stayed home and cooked, and they would cook all day. A lot of mm -hmm. the dishes here are one pot dishes gumbo, jambalaya, red beans, and rice. And things that you could put on, and then once you got the basics done, uh, maybe have the kids help you chop and get ready. But once you're ready to go, uh, it's just a matter of um, simmering it, and, you know, and infusing all that really right. good flavor in there. Yeah, you want it to. You want to get the flavor out of everything. All right. As a matter of fact, in that same context, we have some sausage here that we pre-browned uh, in order to get the grease out of it, so that we wouldn't have all that grease in the soup. And if you can look at the at our pot here, it has the caramelized bond, F O N D from the sausage. We don't want to clean this pot. That is flavor. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. When we put the liquid in here and then scrape with a nice silicone spoon, all that will come up and we'll get that nice caramelization. Caramelization is basically what you get when the sugars in the food cooks and it adds layers and layers of depth. Now ordinarily you would start with the roux. You'll, you'll probably see lots of books and jokes about Louisiana cuisine that say first you make a roux. And to make a roux, you're just going to use flour and oil in a 50-50 ratio um, and cook. You're probably familiar with making a roux for a white sauce, a bechamel or something, um, or maybe even a blonde roux that you might use for some other kind of soups. But in the Cajun and Creole cuisine, goes to darker roux, and it would take hours and hours and hours. So we're going to cheat and use an old-fashioned roux product that's very popular here in Louisiana to help us cut. And this is basically just cooked flour and oil. Now, and you, you said you like to, like, um, if I have the time, put it in the oven. If I have the time, yes, I'll make a roux um, with flour and oil and get it started on the stove. But then, put it in the oven. We're doing two pots here because we have so much turkey. Now you have to take that out of the fridge to make sure it softens. I took it out of the fridge because if it was in the fridge, it'd be hard. Huh? It would be impossible to get out of here. Yeah. Um, so it has to get to room see, temperature to be able to get it out. This is like a dark chocolate color. Oh yeah, it's like. It's, and it's very like very nutty. Color. And I used to call a lady Dotty down in. Um, Gray, Louisiana, near Homer, who could make a dark roux without burning it, which is quite a challenge. But she would stand over it and never leave the pot, um, drink wine and smoke cigarettes, you know. So the, the secret flavor is cigarette smoke? I would or... think it was the wine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just like... And... But he, so do, do many people make roux from scratch and you can just go to the store and buy it in Louisiana or in it, New Orleans? It, it's both. And, it's both. I mean, if, if I have the time, if I'm making chicken etouffee, crawfish etouffee or something, I don't want it this dark, I'll make it. If, but right now with Mardi Gras, we have been cooking 
We cooked two meals, three meals yesterday. We went to parades. We got yeah, we have to keep taking a break for like two or three parades. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're doing other things, doing some work, squeezing in some work when we can, <laughs> you know. And then getting this going. So, we're going to cheat. How long do you think it typically takes you to make a, uh, like a dark brew like that? At least four or five hours. Yeah. And so, but it, it's a lot easier to do in the oven, you said, huh? Man, and I, sh I, I shouldn't taste that at all because it's like really, is it very I salty? I taste it, no. Okay. It's not salty at all. But. It's just yeah. flour and water. I mean, flour and oil. Okay. It has no real flavor. There's no reason to taste this. I mean, you can. If it's an intellectual curiosity, but it's not going to taste good. It's going to taste like flour. On now you said never use a metal because you you end up. Um, you don't want to use a metal thing because you end up scraping metal into the metal. You end up getting a little metal in there. Right. All you want. To, I'm a big fan of silicone spoons, and we're just going to let this. If you, if you, if you don't want to, can you look into this pot? No. Because hmm? you see, it's starting to melt, liquefy. If the oil comes out. I can see the small pot. Yeah. yeah. You can only see that part. Okay. Yeah. It's starting to liquefy. The bottom of it, yeah. So even though it looks solid, it because it, it has so much oil, it just. So we're just gonna let this. We're gonna pause and just let this liquefy before we add our vegetables. Brew has now softened up to the point where it's pretty pliable. And that was just at the lowest temperature. I just, wanna, just wanna warming chew, it up. Yeah. I'm gonna chew on a gas stove. And so we're going to use some chopped onions. Now these are onions for two pots plus a dish we're making tomorrow. Some beans with ham. So this is more than you need, ostensibly, uh, and um, lots of garlic. You may use it all. And uh, so I would say for each pot, basically what we're using is approximately two chopped up onions, one chopped up bell pepper, and we just use two colors for fun. Um, maybe four to six ribs of celery, um, and about six to eight bulbs of garlic. And we might go heavy handed because if we, are, I know that some of us here like garlic, and I haven't checked with you all. Oh, I love garlic. garlic. I even eat. I have been known to eat raw garlic. Okay. But. So we're going to put some onions in the pot. We're going to save some. We're going to cook some now. And you didn't have to add oil because there's a lot. Basically, the roux is 50% oil. The roux is 50% oil. So what we're doing is we're cooking some of the vegetables now so that we'll cook down into the roux and we're going to almost let them dissolve. And then later, we're going to come back and add more. Once we add the broth and thicken it, then we'll come back and add more vegetables and then the turkey and sausage. And then we're going to season this. We're just going to use some Cajun seasoning. If you can find the unsalted, that's actually my preference. It's hard to find even here. Um, the unsalted because then you can control the amount of sodium and not have to worry about it. Now, can you buy, like, you know, once this is cooked down, can you just buy it as a, a mix? No. You can buy the vegetables already chopped up and ready to go. I think you saw that in the store the other day. Yeah. Um, but never, like, the... In the roux? Like, with it cooked down in the roux, like, just basically ready to add broth to it. I've never seen anything like that in any kind of processed product you're going to find. No. That might call itself a gumbo starter. Is going to have so much sodium in it that, yeah. and preservatives that it's not going to be something that I would use. Um, but if you're not concerned about those things, um, then you possibly could. And so we're just going to let this, the room has oil in it and flour. We're just, the vegetables are going to start to release their liquid and start to break down. Then 
we're doing so, so this could take this is going to take a while we're going to cover it and just let it do its thing at, at, we'll, at least an hour right yeah and then we'll probably do we'll see how long it takes and then yeah, but it usually can take hours and then we're going to in the meantime make a snack off camera because <laughs> we have to eat too this is for tuesday all right go for it there okay, you go. so our vegetables have been sweating. Just um, about an hour. About an hour. Yeah. And they are... Pretty much gone. Yeah, very much obliterated into the roux. And that's what we wanted, is to have all that vegetable essence and flavor. And it doesn't matter if it sticks to the bottom of the pan no, a little bit, because you're going to add a lot of broth. Yeah. We're going to add the broth that's going to um, start to come up every time we stir it. And the turkey and the sausage that are going in here are already cooked. So they can be added pretty late in the process. We are going to add some bay leaves. Uh, how did this get here? We are going to add some bay leaves to our pot. Now you said a friend of yours. My cousin. Picks those right off the tree. Right, has a tree. I never thought of them like actually growing on a tree. I mean, they you know. They grow on a tree. <laughs> I just. You want to put some bay leaves in? Yeah, you do two or three, depending on, you know. I tend to like them, so I don't mind. And they're pretty mild, in my opinion. They're nice, earthy. Now, I always count how many, so I remember to take that many out. Because. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I hate taking out when I'm eating. I don't worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I'm serving it to other people, like. Yeah, well, I'll take it out then. then and then you can use any Creole or Cajun seasoning. I happen to like Slap Your Mama seasoning. That's pretty readily available. Across. I prefer the unsalted version, but it's hard as heck to find. You can find Slap Your Mama unsalted or just or it, any Cajun seasoning? They season. used to have an unsalted. I haven't seen it in a good while. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit light with it. I'm adding about a tablespoon because sometimes it tends to get too hot. And I don't really want this to be too hot. Can you hand me the stock? So it's just basically you just add a little spice as it goes along. Yeah. I add a spice as it goes along. Because you can always take it out. But you can't put it back. I mean, you can always put it in. But you can't take it out. <laughs> oh, you know what? We're going to have to pause because we have to skim the fat off of here. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're back magically. Here is our turkey stock, and you can see it's like oh, nice and jello. jelly. <laughs> um, and we've taken off a good bit of the fat. That little bit won't hurt us. And here's the turkey fat that we reserved. And I will use this. I like to cook vegetables with this. Mm -hmm. um, or we're making potato pancakes in a couple of days. Maybe we will cook them in this and give it a nice chicken flavor. But we've got our stock here, so I'm going. And look how beautiful this is, Omar. Look at that. <laughs> it's just like. I always I mean, that that means it's got a lot of gelatin in it. That's going to give us body, you know. And even though we have body from the turkey, we still want to use the roux to thicken to get the traditional taste of gumbo. And we're going to use one of these in here. I'm going to put it in in stages and let it melt and then start to stir. Um, if you dump it all in, it's almost impossible to get it to, to mix and or congeal. So does so, it ends up being lumpy? Lumpy. So we're just going to... You want me to stir one and you do one? Yeah, just going to let it start to melt in and mix in. And what is that noise? Well, it is Mardi Gras. That sounded like one of those... Jeeps? Uh, no, the, the horns that they do during uh, soccer games. I forget what they call them. They banned them at soccer games because they were so loud and obnoxious. But your dog is protecting the house from the obnoxious... Hey! Mardi Gras people. 
Can't you see we're filming here? No. <laughs> Just like. That is our chef dog. Here's a French poodle so we can play French chef. <laughs> Just like. There, with the exception of the crust on the bottom here, we got. But it's and you know lumpy. how I know he's pedigree? No. He only eats French fries. <laughs> Just like. That, that doesn't seem like really pedigree. Oh, I'm teasing. <laughs> Just like. What he really likes are French kisses. <laughs> Just like. So. Okay. So you need to. We need to. Stop this motion you're doing. Oh, okay. Spoon down, silicone down, and, and scrape slowly. Oh, okay, so I'm trying to get that. I don't know what you're doing, but you're like I was trying to do it fast. It just isn't going to work. Okay. This is trying to get a that. labor of love that takes patience. My and it's it's my not to scrape. It, it will scrape the, the see, yeah, flavor off the bottom. I got some of that black stuff on the bottom. Right, but you see mine is very smooth. Yeah. My so dad me, always said, be patient or you become one. So let me... You're just going back and forth. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to get it under the spoon so it will break up. You don't want it to be lumpy. If it gets lumpy, We'll never recover from that. And we just want to go back and forth and kind of mix it up. Now you said we we're saving these veggies to add well, we're gonna towards add the end for pretty texture. soon, actually. Uh, because we're going to try and finish this tonight. We're going to add the turkey and the sausage, let it simmer a little bit, and then take it off. Before midnight? Hopefully. <laughs> you know, about sometimes we don't start cooking until 10 p.m. Well, it's you know, so hot here. I well, mean, this is winter, and I'm sweating at night. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's like, just like... I told you the other day, when it drops below 70 here, they declare a freeze alert. It's just like... But. And it was cold today. I had a, a thermal t-shirt on this morning. It was almost 75 degrees. <laughs> okay, give me some more. All right. Stop. Yep. I keep. And one. And then the same for the other one. Yeah. And it's just going to melt in. And we just want to keep stirring. And you can stir that one. Stir with your spoon facing down. I prefer a silicone spoon, not a metal spoon. A metal spoon is just going to scrape metal on metal, and you're going to get heavy metals in your food. And they say that those micro metals, um, I was told by a neuro, what did we call that? A neurologist. When my mother was in advanced age, that the heavy metals, especially aluminum, contributes to Alzheimer's and dementia. So they, and I threw away all of my metal spoons. I don't use them at all. I heard a lot of people don't use aluminum pots and pans anymore because they heard that that was the case. I don't think it's a question of heard. I think it's a question of science now. They've proven it. Is that everything in that bowl? Yep. No more? Oh, here's your, your spoon. I'm going to hand you this spoon. And, I mean, just look at that. <laughs> just like. That's really good stock. And we're going to need more than we were able to make. Well, we'll see once we put the turkey in. But I have some unsalted chicken stock from the store um, and I buy low sodium unsalted everything because you can always add it and always add salt but when you I tend to try to cook without salt but 
when you start with something that's salty and it reduces, it just gets more salty. And then the sausage has salt. And so gradually you just build up too much. This color is amazingly dark. Well, that's because we started with a dark roux <coughs> in a jar, cheating. So how long can you, like if you make roux and you know, put it in the fridge, how long Oh, can you, you can keep, keep it as long as you're fair, you can keep it for a couple of months. So you, you never have to freeze it, you just... I just keep it in the fridge, I mean, of course I live in New Orleans, I live in Louisiana, and so this is common food for me. Now I have, a, I have my pot at the very lowest temperature. Yeah, we can raise it now. We've got liquid in it. We had lowered it when we were simmering the vegetables in the roux. We just kept lowering it, kept lowering it. So we could go have a snack. Oh, we lost some. We need to grab that real quick before it melts. Let's see what you want. Wait. Start with my other hand. Maybe. Oh, I broke it in half. Accidents, don't look. This is unprofessional. Are you, are you saying professionals never make mistakes? Well, they cover them up better than we did, did on camera. Oh, you turned it off. Let me turn that on. Yeah, because I didn't want you to reach in the stove. <laughs> Yeah, I learned to make, we made a Christmas cake recently on the cooking show, and we learned to make, um, I just forgot what it is, it was an almond crust, um, I forgot what it's called, now. and it was just like, basically you can have like the horriblest looking cake, and then you roll out this almond, um, kind of like a ganache, and you can cover up the cake. So you can make an ugly cake as long as you do a good job frosting? Yeah, that's basically... Yeah. Alright. It's all about it's just going to simmer for a while, so all those little bits of caramelization are going to gradually come up. Break free from the bottom of the pan. And break up. Yep. So. so we need a lot more stock that we don't have. So we're going to add some from the store. And then we have more on order coming tomorrow that when we reheat this on Tuesday. I mean, but we do have the same size container of turkey. It'd probably fill up the whole pan. Well, I want to... Ooh, I'm All right. All right, so we have some unsalted chicken broth in case we need it. Although... Um, <clears throat> we do have, what, three pounds of sausage and... We have sausage and turkey to add to this pot, so we can add that on Tuesday. And yeah, we've got... Because it'll still be the, simmering. The same size... Uh, what the broth is we have the turkey the same size containers like and again I'm saving some of this because we're going to make beans with ham see that was the we pulled all the little bits of turkey off so we can just add the sausage and the turkey right before we serve it and it's already cooked or just on Tuesday there's no reason to add it now I'm, it's cooked it, it serves no it, purpose oh yeah but you have keep you keep saying Tuesday like it's not a special day. On Mardi Gras day. <laughs> it's just like Well, it, Mardi Gras is just another Tuesday around here. It's just like I live in the French Quarter where every day is a party. There's you know, there's there been is, like three parades every day for like well, a week. Well, some days seven. Oh, it's just like or nine. 
much. It depends on the day. Today there was probably a lot. And yesterday there was probably a lot. Okay. Yeah, I think what Saturday the first one I think we said was at eleven a.m. and the, yeah, the last one was a... at like five or six p.m. So I'm gonna just take a chance and add a little more. And now we're just going to let this simmer. To let the vegetables cook a bit, let the flavors come together, um, and then we might at the very end add the turkey and the sausage, and then put it up in plastic containers because we need the pots to make um, oh yeah more food. <laughs> or just, I don't want you to starve. <laughs> just like it. speaking of starving, you know what I forgot to put in? I don't put the garlic in early because it tends to burn and get bitter. So now... Speaking of bitter, you wouldn't let me use any of the celery leaves. Well, it's not a question of I wouldn't. I mean, it's just not a common practice for anyone who cooks professionally because it's just very bitter and it has a bitter taste. I mean, I mean, you, I had you eat a raw leaf. It's horrible. Yeah. You know? I... It's kind of no point. It is pretty stringent flavor. Yeah. All okay. right. Okay. It's like okay. Like thirty minutes later. So it's about thirty minutes. Right after midnight. <laughs> hey, it's yeah. early. For you. <laughs> when I was a kid here in New Orleans, I used to eat dinner and then take a nap. And then get up around 11 p.m. and get dressed. And then go out for between 12 and 1 a.m. And stay out. The bars in New Orleans don't close. There's no mandatory closing time. Okay. And so it would not be uncommon to stay out till 7, 8, 9 a.m. I've done that at Latin parties before. but So we're going to go ahead and... Add some of our sausage to the soup, gumbo. And we're going to add some of our turkey, and we're going to finish this on Tuesday. All we have to do is add the rest of the turkey, and then maybe adjust the stock and the seasoning. I might taste it now to see if it needs more. I'm very cautious with salt and seasoning, because those can always be added. And of course here in New Orleans, people will add hot sauce, to their bowl. Okay. And we're going to serve this with just simple white rice, plain. And, uh, you know, if I get energetic, I might chop up some parsley to put on the rice or in the gumbo. But no dill? No dill! <laughs> just like we've just been having a... <laughs> the dill was for the salmon the other night. <laughs> we just never can find it. We yeah, went to, what, five to... stores? <laughs> anyway, that's a joke. <laughs> can you hand me the turkey? Okay. But this is from that turkey carcass that we made the broth and we pulled the meat off. Right. Don't waste anything. Oh, this won't even pull it out. We have this beautiful turkey that's already cooked, so it doesn't really need to cook in the soup. It's just at this point going to be a garnish. And then we're also going to serve it with chopped green onions, which would be very traditional. Oh, some of this turkey didn't get chopped. We got some big ass pieces in here. Huh? But, now, do many people make turkey gumbo? I, like yeah, chicken and sausage is very common. Turkey it's just, and pot. It's whatever you have extra. It's whatever you have. You know, these were made as one pot meals. The Cajuns, that, people that originated these dishes were trappers, fishermen, hunters. So it's the scra it was, scraps left over from selling the valuable parts, right? It's whatever they could get. No, they would use whole animals, but it might have been nutria from the swamp, which is like a rodent from the rodent family, or rabbit, or chickens, or whatever they had. Mm -hmm. You know, people lived off the land, and they would just do whatever they could. And maybe they would trade 
you know, with other people for if they were if they were out shooting animals or catching fish. Oh, look at all that turkey jello. They would. <laughs> it's almost like head cheese on the bottom. They would trade some of the animals for vegetables, for spices. Mm -hmm. And then when they would set up a campfire, they would pitch a fire, put a big black pot hanging over it, and just simmer whatever they had. And all of these, one of the little known things about Cajun cuisine is that all of these dishes were designed to be one pot dishes because that was their lifestyle. They were nomadic. You know, they were out hunting and fishing and moving. They weren't, they didn't have a house or a kitchen. And you could just put the pot on the fire and let it slow cook all night. Slow cook. Yeah. So. And let it do your thing. All right. And they probably let it, did it with the bones in it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to check, uh, uh, taste it to check our seasoning. Because I'm light on salt and pepper and things like that usually at the beginning. And we do have a whole nother tub of turkey, so. We have an entire another tub of turkey. And yeah. we have some more unsalted chicken broth. And this is as far as we're going to take it now. We'll finish let, it. Let it cool off and let it cool off put and it in the fridge and warm it, it up on fridge, Mardi Gras Warm it up day. on Tuesday. And, um, for your stream of guests that come well, in. Well, we don't know if we're going to have any guests. It might just be feeding you. Oh, well, I'll eat one pot. But it wouldn't be uncommon because of my location in the French Quarter that people will pop in and say, can I use your bathroom? <laughs> and then they're usually drinking and so we offer them a little something. That yeah. would be very customary here in New Orleans. My neighbor will do the same thing across the street. She'll have a big spread and her kids and their friends will roll in like... Ehh. So we can pop in over there and I can taste her food? I don't usually do that. <laughs> um, you know, that's for her family. <laughs> so, um, thank you for sharing this with me. It's... Like every every recipe I've seen, it's always seem really simple, but they never go into the detail on. They always rush it. That's what they do, and you you know definitely pushed me over and over again to just take your time. This is a slow dish. Yeah. A lot of these Louisiana dishes are slow dish. They're, they're from another era. You know, if somebody tells you they're going to microwave gumbo, run. <laughs> Just like... Run. So okay. what? what's your most common way to heat it up? Just I'm just going to put some back in the pot and heat it up. Yeah. You know, I'm going to adjust the seasonings, maybe add a little more stock. Um, but that's about it. All right. Thank you so much. We have the base done, so now it's just final adjustments to what, serve it. What do I say? Bon temporale? Huh? You say... Lasse le bon temps roule. <laughs> Let the good times roll. There we go. And now it's time for me to go to bed. Past midnight. It's early. <laughs>